Hi, this is David Fine with Keys Mods. Welcome to Wacky Worm Series. Today we're featuring one of my favorite South Florida butterflies, the Statira Sulphur, Afrisa Statira. So there are five large sulfurs that live and breed in South Florida. Statira is one of them. It's a backyard bug for us. They're easy to garden for. We'll tell you about that in a few minutes. They're about 2.5 inch wingspan and they're pretty difficult to tell apart from some of their cousin species while flying around in nature. Males of Satira, they are lemon yellow in color and the outer margin of the forewings and hindwings have this cream colored andraconial coloration and it invades on the forewing, invades the stiscal cell of the forewing. And I'll tell you why that's important in a minute. Females are seasonally dimorphic. They are yellowish in the cooler, drier months of the winter. They have more of a yellow coloration. And in the summer months and the wet months, uh, they have more of a cream colored or a white, even a white coloration when they emerge from their chrysalis. Females have these black, uh, spots on the on the outer rim of the forewing and also that black spot in the discal cell of the forewing as well. There are several species that look very similar to Statira. One of them is the pink spot sulfur. I mean, almost impossible to tell males apart in the field. Uh, the pink spot sulfur obviously has that little pink spot on the on the ventral hind wing where the hind wing attaches to the thorax but all oh, that's only on fresh specimens once it's been flying for a day or two that pink spot might not be there and you might not be able to tell them apart on the forewing if you open it up the pink spot sulfur the the andraconial co cream colored coloration is a little bit more yellow than statira and it does not invade that discal cell as it does in statira so that's the main difference females a little bit easier to tell apart than, uh, than the males are because the pink spot sulfur, again, has the pink spot on the, on the hind wing just like the males do, but they have some larger uh, black markings on the forewings than do Statira. Senna, uh, the cloudless sulfur is another close relative of Statira. Males are very tough, again, to tell apart in, on the wing, but the, if you were to get an up close look, the underside of the uh, cloudless sulfur has a little bit more brown, brownish markings than does the tira, and the inside obviously on the cloudless sulfur does not have that cream colored discal or andraconial markings on the outside of the forewings. Statira feeds on coin vine, which is a Dalbergia species, and it's a woody vine that grows in coastal areas on mangroves and beach dunes throughout South Florida on both coasts. And so if you wanna find a Statira in nature, probably the best place to go is a beach dune or a mangrove habitat on southeast or southwest west coast of Florida, and they can be probably one of the most common butterflies around. I have a Delbergia coin vine in my yard, and there are Statiras in my backyard all year long. It's a pretty cool thing. Females will lay cream-colored eggs on the very, very fresh new growth of a coin vine. In fact, if you're going to raise these guys, I suggest let, raising them outside on the living potted plant. That's the best way to do it. Uh, you trim back your plant, the coin vine, it loves fertilizer, trim it back, it flushes out new growth, and you can raise a whole, as many as you want on that plant out there. And let nature raise them, because if you take them in, you raise them on cuttings, uh, if you're raising them on cuttings for more than a couple of days, you probably will get an adult that's very, very, very small. In fact, almost half the size of a normally normal adult that you would find out in the wild. So there's some kind of nutritional thing that's happening there uh, if you're trying to raise them on cutting. So raise them on the live plant if you want healthy adults. But cream colored eggs laid on the fresh new tendril, new little uh, leaflets, uh, marrow stems of the coin vine plants. The caterpillars, they hatch out, they only eat the fresh new growth of those plants. The caterpillars are green. They've got yellow lateral lines that go down both sides of, of the caterpillar. And when they make their chrysalis, they pupate on the underside of the central vein of the leaf. And the pupa looks, it's an incredible leaf mimic. Same color as the, the coin vine leaf. And it's got that very typical horn that comes off the nose or the face of the sulfur pupa. Most sulfurs have some kind of a horn uh, shaped appendage on the chrysalis and they, and they have that. 
Adult Satiras, they're fast and furious, so approaching them is tough. The best way to approach a female is find a coin vine and wait for her to come and oviposit. And you can probably get a little close to them at that point and take some pictures. Males, they are fast, man. They're very difficult to approach. They're very, very weary of, of anything that's approaching them and they fly, fly very fast. So the best way is getting the right nectar sources and they love firebush, the Himal um, Himalaya patents. They love um, Bidens. If you have a few of these types of nectar sources, uh, it won't be a problem at all. If you have coin vine and firebush in your yard, you're going to have satiras there all day long, every day in South Florida. And so uh, that's about all the time we got for today. I uh, hope you subscribe to the channel. We've got plenty more Wacky Worms videos where this comes from. Uh, give us a like, share us with your friends, and until next time, enjoy South Florida. Take care. Thank you.